Item 14-209 is a request to approve an offer of a five-year contract with a five-year mutual option to the LST Ship Memorial Foundation to relocate the LST 325 to Peoria's Riverfront. And there is a handout um, on your desk on white. Uh, Mr. Setti, did you want to uh, maybe start this conversation with a kind of a summarization of a lot of information that you've given the council over the last number of weeks, probably into months now, and and maybe uh, frame up, uh, uh, you know, kind of focus in on what we need to uh, get done tonight? Sure. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, at, at the meeting on May 27th, you asked uh, staff to to do, do, do a few things. One was to gather some public input and interest on this particular issue, as well as answer a few questions that you had provided. Uh, since that meeting, we've conducted a number of public uh, input activities. Uh, we launched a, an online web, uh, an online survey. We had 300, as of today, 313 responses to that survey. We created a Facebook page, uh, mainly to share information with, uh, with people about the project and get them uh, to understand a little bit better. Um, we discussed the issue at the June 17th Downtown Advisory Commission meeting, uh, and then also we held a public meeting uh, on June 17th at the Gateway Building. Um, through these efforts, it seems clear that a majority of the people who at least have chosen to respond to, uh, uh, to our inquiries support bringing the LST 325 to Peoria. Uh, uh, we have, uh, just as, as one you know, measurement of that, 62% of those responding to the survey expressed, report, uh, re expressed support for, uh, for the project. Uh, while there seems to be a, a, a good debate about the location, and if you remember, we, we proposed two, two loca uh, locations, one essentially in front of the river station, one just north or upstream of the I-74 bridge, um, there seems to be a debate as to what's the best location. It seems, uh, looking at the surveys and other comments we've received, that, uh, that there is a, there's a stronger preference for the, uh, the area in Festival Park, which would be just north of the I-74 bridge. Um, I would suggest that this, if, if we are going to proceed with an offer at this point, that this would be the, the location that we made as part of our offer rather than the original proposal of the River Station location, just based on the level of support we seem to be getting for that location. Um, we believe the cost differential, I outlined that to you in an, uh, in an email later today, probably about $130,000 difference uh, in, in cost uh, to do it there, to the uh, cost more to do it there. Um, in addition to more public engagement, I provided you with some information that you had requested on cost, uh, comparable ship museums, and, uh, and some economic impact. Um, I think the four, last four weeks have actually been very productive. I have been in contact with the LST uh, found, uh, Ship Memorial Foundation Board, uh, the board president, to let him know about our progress. I uh, shared with him some of the reports that I shared with you. Um, their president has indicated that they would like to make a decision in July. Previously, they've never really given us a deadline. We knew that their deadline to give to the city of Evansville was October 1. Uh, but their board has, has said to him that they would like to make a decision in July. So I feel it's appropriate that if, if possible that we make a decision tonight so that we're giving them the proper time uh, to ask any more questions of us uh, and be able to make their decision. Uh, the biggest issue that's out there seems to be the cost. Um, we have uh, estimated this at about 1.5 million. Uh, the, if, if we're going with the alternate location, we'll call it 1.6 million uh, as a capital outlay. Um, and, and that is not to be taken lightly, the, the cost. While we, are, we would be hopeful that many of the, much of this cost would be covered by external funds, either through public facility sales tax or um, a state tourism grant or corporate donations or individual donations, um, none of that is guaranteed. Um, at this point, uh, I, I gave some information about how that state tourism grant works. We can't apply for it until we actually have a project. So. Um, uh, it's obvious that, that cost would seem to be sort of the biggest issue here. Um, so I, I would, tonight, I, I believe and, and staff believes that you, you basically have three options for you to consider tonight. One would be to simply not make an offer. Uh, that wouldn't mean that the project wasn't good uh, and that we wouldn't wish that the LST were here, but we simply weren't in a financial position to make that offer at, at this moment. And that would be one option that's, that's left to you. 
A second option would be to make an offer and do so at the full risk of covering all costs. So the 1.6 million or so, uh, we would probably get, try to work, that, that is an engineer's estimate and, and kind of a broad estimate based on, on, on current concepts. Um, but the, the, the city council would make a full offer to the LST board and say, we will cover all the costs and we'll find a way of doing it. Um, a third option, and I've, I've discussed this with a few of you, is, is to simply make an offer that might be contingent upon some level of external funding. So just as an example only, if the city council felt, it, and, and this would also be because we felt it was a worthy project but not sure we could afford all of it, if the city council were to uh, say we can commit $500,000 as an example to this project and then um, charge staff with going out and, and making an offer like that uh, to the LST board and that they would have to understand that if we did not receive the external funding, uh, that, that our offer, I guess, would be a moot offer or would somehow uh, uh, dematerialize. Uh, I'm looking for the right way of, of, of explaining that. Uh, but So the offer would somewhat be contingent upon other external funding. That can give you a level of comfort that, that, the, that, the, that the city is only exposed to a certain amount that, of an amount we think we can, you can afford, um, but also gives them some comfort that, that we're going to be trying very hard. Um, I would remind you that any of these are merely offers we are making to them. They are not, they have the right to turn us down. Um, they have been, um, you know, uh, we, much has been made about their location in Evansville and the, you know, some of the difficulties they've had with connectivity to their downtown. I know Councilwoman Akeson was down in Evansville and saw this firsthand as did Mr. Vlahos over here. Um, but Evansville has been very aggressive in their, um, in their pitch to keep the LST 325, wants to keep them very much, has made them uh, some good concessions about location if, if, if some things change. So uh, we still do have some very stiff competition. So with that, uh, I'd be happy to answer any other questions you might have about the materials I've provided or, or the offer going forward. Thank you. This is setting again uh, for a number of weeks and months now. Uh, the, the research that, uh, that you have done and, and information you've provided has been exemplary and I, we, we appreciate the the, the uh, diligence that you've put into this. Uh, Councilman Spain and then Councilman Jensen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I echo those sentiments. Mr. City Manager, I know you've worked uh, very hard on this issue for uh, might be an entire uh, year or so when, when we first learned of this opportunity. So I thank you and thanks for your diligence in continuing to add additional research uh, details and investigation that I think has helped us uh, think about this issue uh, in, in a um, more robust way. So if, if we have three or so options, and I suppose uh, 11 of us could dream up other options, but uh, if we have the three options of uh, maybe a polite uh, uh, no, the timing isn't right or not a good fit for us, uh, offer the full option of the entire uh, outlay, uh, and then there seems to be the compromise option, and certainly, as you pointed out, we don't know uh, whether or not that option would be accepted. But of a hypothetical amount here, if we're you threw out the number five hundred thousand, which let's use that for example for now. So really, there's a remaining cost of one point one million dollars that um, we would need to seek uh, if we were successful in. Uh, being awarded the relationship with the LST, correct? Yes. And the IBOT grant we anticipate might be in the range of five hundred to seven hundred fifty thousand. Uh, technically, it it would be up to fifty percent of the total infrastructure cost. So if if that cost is one point six million, technically it could be eight hundred thousand. Now whether we would be successful in getting an eight hundred thousand dollar grant, may you know, might be a stretch. Uh, and but but it's still so yes I think four to five hundred thousand uh, dollars is doable. This is this is a different kind of pro in, in speaking with the project manager for the uh, Bureau of Tourism. This is a different kind of project than they normally fund. The, here, the, the Bureau of Tourism really gets to compete against another state, which is something that they're they're not generally doing. So I think they'd be willing to look at this a little bit differently. But I'm not sure they'd be able to. Um, I wouldn't want to rely on, on an $800,000 grant at this point after having that conversation with them. 
Sure. And other ideas that we have could be uh, assistance from the county through the public facilities uh, sales tax, the additional quarter percent from 2009, correct? I, th that uh, We've had some early conversations with uh, county staff about that. Or reaching out perhaps to the private sector to help. Uh, right. There, there may be other foundations. There may be federal grant opportunities or other sorts of, of, uh, of um, resources that are out there we just haven't explored yet. But yes, corporate donations or individual donations could be there as well. And in terms of how we would package our response back to the LST board, um, if we were to pursue, if, if the council were supportive of what I call the compromise option, tonight that I do think gives us a little more protection on our end uh, from a financial perspective. What do, we, what do you need to hear from us uh, tonight to help you craft the proposal that would go back uh, to the board? I think I would need for you to tell me which of the two locations for sure, and if it's the, the Festival Park location or the, or the River Station location, just so that I would know what I was offering them for sure and then some dollar amount that you felt comfortable um, allocating from city resources. Uh, and when we, there's, there's a variety of, of, of sources from tax increment financing you know, to general funds, capital dollars, uh, or tourism reserve funds, potentially. Um, so some amount so that I would know what the balance was so that I would be giving them a realistic view of how we would be going forward because th they deserve that. They deserve to have a realistic look at what our offer is compared to what they have in Evansville. Okay. I, Mr. Chairman, I think uh, what it may be helpful for us to have is perhaps a motion to consider and uh, aid us in our deliberations as we move forward. And so I'm going to try to do that based on the uh, items just mentioned by the city manager. So I do think that this is uh, a project that could be a, a nice addition to our riverfront. I think it's very, uh, it's a tremendous tribute to the veterans in our community. Uh, I think, uh, I think it would uh, create some positive opportunities for us. But I also think we need to be careful. Uh, we've all received the uh, economic impact uh, that certainly um, is something that. Uh, our estimates at this point, but uh, something that we need to consider. So a compromise option that gives us the chance uh, to limit the use of, of city dollars here I think is appropriate. And I would say we need to be careful about the funds we use, and I'd be supportive of TIF funds uh, for the, that are confined to this geographic area uh, and or probably a combination of uh, a opportunity within the tourism reserve fund. So no dollars that we'd put on the table would be otherwise available for important city services that I think we're all aware of and constantly looking for additional dollars. So Mr. Chairman, let me make a motion uh, that we direct staff to proceed with uh, an offer to the LST board uh, for a location on our riverfront in the Festival Park area uh, where we seem to have some more support for an amount not to exceed $500,000 from the city of Peoria with uh, our pledge and effort uh, to work to assemble the remaining amount of financing. And you know what, if we're not able to do it, as the assistant manager said, uh, obviously they have a right to change their mind and go a different direction. So I'll introduce that as a motion. Okay. Uh, seconded by Councilwoman uh, Jensen. And then I had Councilman Jensen and then Councilman Turner. Thank you, uh, Mayor Artis. First, uh, I guess, Mr. Setti, I can barely we're, we're see both, you over there. We're, we're both I just wanted short. to commend you for all your hard work in this um, as well. I attended the public meeting at the River Station, and you've just done, I'm sorry, at the River, no, at the Gateway Building, but you've done a tremendous job, and I, I know the whole council appreciates your work as well as um, the people on the riverfront and the city as a whole. So thank you. Um, I also want to thank you for um, kind of modifying your recommendation tonight. I think that the location over by the Riverplex at uh, Festival Park is a much better location. Um, I think as I've stated before, as a former resident of 401 
or tenant of 401 Water Street. I walked along that park, that uh, parkway quite frequently, and I would not like to have a big wall of gray there with the ship right there. I also frequently go to the riverfront market, and I think having the ship in that location um, would, would, would be a real negative. So um, I support the location over at Festival Park. I think it's a better location. Um, and I also want to um, commend you for offering um, this idea of a compromise. I think it's, it's a good idea um, to have our offer contingent upon um, external funding. Um, I was planning tonight, because I have had real uh, reservations about the um, financial viability, and so I was real concerned and, and really was considering voting against it, but I can support and do support um, offering the LST a contingent offer um, based on external funding. So thank you very much. Thank you. Councilman Turner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I guess the first thing I wanted to do is uh, thank uh, Councilman Spain for his leadership on this, ever, this endeavor. And I wanted to thank uh, Mr. Seti for all the things that he has done relative to this, to getting us where we are, because I didn't know what kind of option we needed. But this item, I talked to the veterans at my American Legion, was vitally important to them. You know, it's, there are those things that, you know, in a community that really make a difference. And this makes a difference to that greatest generation that served, that are dying at the rate of a thousand a day. You know, this is one of those few remaining artifacts of World War II and with all that we are doing on our riverfront and in the warehouse district, I think, as you said, would be a great asset to our city, to our community, and to our riverfront. You know, it's a true remembrance of that greatest generation of World War II veterans. It's also going to be a reminder of those who served at that time and our community's support for those veterans as well as it was mentioned by Councilman Spain, it's going to attract visitors and conventions hopefully to our community and to our city and to our changing riverfront. So I thank you on behalf of the veterans and on behalf of the people at the American Legion Post 2 for coming up with some type of creativity to keep us on point and moving us forward for this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Moore. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, too, looked at this uh, for quite a long time, and, and even before arriving on the council, I could appreciate Mr. Setti's work. Uh, he and I became uh, very closely acquainted as we were moving through a couple of years of TIF conversations for the South Town. Um, I spoke with my, uh, I have, my father was in the military as well as my brother, and unfortunately my father is deceased, uh, but he was a missionary who, after his military days, serve the, the underserved. Uh, my brother, who, is, uh, who has no other choice but to help my mom at the food, ba uh, food bank at the church, uh, and I had a conversation about these kinds of issues. And many of my uncles also served in the military. The conversation with my brother surrounded what would be best for an area of the city that I represent uh, the area of the city that I represent would love to have the LST in the alternate location. Uh, we support all of our military uh, families that are in the district and in our city and nationally. Um, however, uh, my support comes without any city funding and would strictly look for outside funding. And the reason that is, as we discussed earlier, the, the entirety of the first district is in a food desert, not just the south side, but the, first, but the North Valley, where, typically, where, where this ship would be butting up against the North Valley. Um, we've got issues related to re relocation of low-income housing before us. Many people talk about uh, what Cabrina Green did, but without talking about the $100 million that Chicago threw at Cabrina Green. Uh, in my district, in one part of my district, there is 43% unemployment. 43% unemployment. And those are just the big hitters. 
I won't go through crime and code enforcement and substandard housing and, and lack of retail in, our, in some of my areas, Madison Theater, the whole lot, CSO. And so I strongly support bringing the LST here with an alternate um, option that you provided. Thank you for those. Uh, but I would not like to see any funds from the city go toward that. Rather, uh, I think based upon the strong support that uh, Councilman Turner indicated that there would be outside in individuals, organizations that would step up to support bringing them here. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Akerson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is a question for um, Assistant City Manager Seti, and I will echo what everyone has said. Obviously, you've worked very long and hard on this, and um, I was amazed at how late you were up last night. Um, and even today, when you were supposed to have a little bit of respite, you were still working away. So um, thank you for, for doing that. Um, as you mentioned, I did drive to Evansville to take a look at this um, ship. I have a tendency to call it a boat. I recognize it's not a boat. Um, and now this is a twist to locate the boat in another location. I was not in favor of the recommended or the requested uh, location, which is adjacent to the downtown. And as I look at the pictures of the ship, would the numbers that you've presented to us replicate what is currently there now in Evansville? I mean, I'm not the, sure the, I understand Well, the, the, the infrastructure work. So in other words, the way that the boat is situated currently in Evansville, it's offshore by quite a distance. The coast is um, tethered to the boat somewhat by a ramp, and there is a large patio facility that they use for outdoor parties and a variety of other um, events, outdoor dining. Um, there is a small building that is also on a floating mechanism, which I think you described in this. That I, I think I... I so do, do you get what I'm right. saying? No, is it I, no I understand be? your question now. No, it, it, right. In Evansville, the LST ship is, is, is pushed very far out into the river for whatever reasons, and I'm not sure what, what the reasons for that particular arrangement are, but what we would be suggesting, in, in the, in, and I, I don't, I'm not sure I've, I've brought it tonight, but previously I've sent you some renderings of how it would look in this alternate location, and it would essentially be um, up against the shore. And so we would, the docking system would, um, would be, uh, you know, right up against the seawall that's there, just upstream of the, of the bridge, and the, the ship would just be up against, the, essentially up against the seawall. There would obviously be a docking mechanism that's between them, but it would be very close to the, to the you know, to the seawall there and not pushed out into the river as it is in, uh, in Evansville. So then what would happen with flooding? The, one of the reasons... Or any sort of, sure. you know, adjust no, right, yeah. elevation change in the river, which is common. Right. Uh, the, the mechanism as designed would float with with the river so that it, it, it is designed to keep the ship securely moored uh, to the system, to the, you know, to, to shore essentially um, in all sorts of, uh, in all sorts of river conditions. So it, it essentially, uh, the, 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 where the fenders meet the, the ship, that mechanism goes up and down on, on pylons that are, drill, or, are um, drilled into the bedrock so that that stays put. Do you mind if I keep asking some questions? Okay. So then what happens to the building that would house the gift shop, the ticket booth, their offices? Right. Where, where would that be built? And so, would, okay. Uh, the way, the, because that whole area is in a floodplain, we couldn't, without building it on stilts or something, we couldn't essentially build something in Festival Park. And so the solution we came up with is if you were to go down to what the, where the spirit of Peoria is, um, they have built a building on a, essentially on a barge. They've built a building on top of a dock. And so that, that is the email I tried to pound out with my thumbs on my phone during my respite this afternoon of uh, that, that we would essentially build a building on a, on, a, on a barge that, and barges, people think of barge in a different way, on a floating, on a floating dock that would become then part of the overall dock. That would, so it would become kind of a controlled access point um, just where the seawall ends, 
uh, along there and, and you kind of go back down into the shore, that's where it would be placed. And it too would float with, you know, with the, just as the, the river station, I'm sorry, just as the Spirit of Peoria's kiosk does now. Okay, so that is similar to what they have, although, um, you know, the boat is a distance from the shore. And, um, okay, so, all right, well, you know, that adds a different twist to this. I'm not, I'm not in favor. I agree with Councilwoman Moore. I think that the financing needs to come from um, private sources, not from our public sources. I mean, I, I was thinking if we were going to be willing to explore some other um, entertainment type experiences for our citizens and we were committed to a million and a half dollars, I mean, I think that we could ask the citizens, what would you like to see at the riverfront? I mean, I can imagine in the wintertime an ice rink um, in the same location that the s s farmer's market is and use the river station that's not being used now to, you know, be the place where the skating um, rental takes place and using the river station restaurant as, you know, a restaurant similar to what they have in Millennial Park. I'm sorry that we keep bringing up Chicago as a point of reference for other options that we could explore. But at the end of the day, we have so many infrastructure needs and there are so many areas of our city that um, people just are shaking their heads and wondering why is the city council not understanding and recognizing there are so many needs for things that we've built 20 years ago. So I like the way that this is moving so that it's an alternate location and with funds coming from someplace other than the taxpayer dollars. Okay. Councilman Weaver. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, what's the depth of the water in that area and what's the lowest the depth gets and is that ever going to be a problem for the amount of water that's needed for this to float? I don't know the answers to any of those questions, but that's why we hired Midwest Foundation, and I assume that they kind of looked at that. That's, that's where the ship has, uh, when it has been here on its two previous visits, uh, has been. So I assume it's not a problem. Uh, but uh, the, the water at pool in the is, is at 12 feet. Where it is at that exact moment or at that location, I'm not sure, but I've been assured by by the, by the professionals at Midwest Foundation that, that that particular location will work. Okay, great. So you, be, you have that assurance that we wanted that problem in a dry summer. Right. Okay. And um, I, I didn't quite understand Councilwoman Moore's position because it's her district. I want to make sure I understand her. That you said that um, you support this idea but do not support any funding. Did you mean zero funding or the $500,000 motion that's on the floor? Zero city funding because one of the one of the things that was mentioned was uh, TIF funds, and the TIF funds are I'm looking at economic development in the in the district, uh, and to take if there was TIF funds available to that degree I don't think there is in where that LST would be, uh, and put it in the put it in the river, instead of putting it on the streets I, I have a very difficult time reconciling that with what I see going on in the in the North Valley. Thank you. Thanks for your opinion on that. Okay. Further uh, questions, comments, Councilman Gribb? Uh, th thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, well, could you repeat the motion? The motion is to direct staff to proceed with an offer to the LST board to locate the ship in the fest Festival Park area, uh, not to ex in an amount not to exceed five hundred thousand uh, dollars, with the city's pledge to assemble the remaining financing. One of my concerns about the motion, which I believe is is an attempt to secure the needed votes tonight, <clears throat> is the manner in which this is received. <clears throat> by the people uh, in Evansville, Indiana. It would seem to me that there are so many question marks. This could very well cement the boat to Evansville, Indiana uh, for another however many years they agree to. So what this motion may in essence be is a no vote. 
even though it looks like we're keeping the door open. But if I were in Evansville, Indiana, and I were the LST people, and I saw this half measure coming forward, it would probably not encourage me to consider moving the boat from the Ohio River to the Illinois River. Uh, I, I believe this, this offer will be dead on arrival. And that being the case, and I could be wrong, and I hope I'm wrong, that means, in essence, we have let this opportunity slip through our fingers. Now, I am of two minds on this as well. I could list so many things that are bedeviling our community today. All the financial challenges that we have and everything else. But I will also say this, still believe Peoria is, we're not quite there yet in terms of reaching our ability to draw tourists to this city. I've said it before and I'll say it again tonight. I believe this could be a very important trifecta in our downtown, in the first district. I believe it could very well cause people to come to Peoria and consider staying all night. They could do many things. Of course, they would first come to West Main Street. Yes. And then, of course, they could go to the Riverfront Educational and Entertainment Center. I don't call it a museum. I have a problem with that term. It sounds very stuffy and standoffish. They could do the Caterpillar Visitor Center. They could do a lot of wonderful things here in Peoria. We have the history here in Peoria if we would market it better. If Peoria is nothing else, it is a great historic settlement of a city. I don't know how many times I have said this in 13 years. We have the French Indian connection. We have it all here. This morning I had breakfast with a veteran. You would all probably know who he is. And he had concern about the number of veterans of World War II who are dying off. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. The people of this country, the people of this city, will never forget what these people have done for this country. Who would have thought one of our best-selling movies would have been Lincoln? That seems so distant in the past. Look at the educational opportunity for our school children. We've got a Fortune 25 company in town. They have contacts. They have a commitment to this community. I think they will help us creatively if we continue to ask them for some thoughts on this. But I think we need to make a commitment. We don't want it. Just vote it down. A half measure is not going to cut it. And I read with great interest, I might add, I don't normally comment on articles I read in the newspaper, but I'm going to do it tonight. I read the news report from our journalist who went to the Ohio River area to investigate this as a possibility and to interview the local townspeople. I couldn't help be, be struck by what this could mean for our community. Remember. The boat in Evansville, Indiana, is in a very inconvenient place. We are putting it in a trifecta configuration if we bring this here. The success can be far greater than anything that's happened in Evansville, Indiana, if we're willing to believe that we can do it as a community.
I think we should move forward with confidence. I believe we can generate <clears throat> some additional funds to do this. I believe in the final analysis, and maybe I'm naive on this. My economic model tells us we will more than get back the money that we expend. I'd rather see us do a 10-year commitment instead of five. I believe we will get the money back many times over. That's how confident I am of a trifecta downtown. Yes, I'm not saying that we should reject the proposal, but I think we need to seriously consider the ramifications of the proposal as it is currently brought forth. I think it is half-hearted, and I think it will not be well received. I think it will, in essence, consign us not bringing the boat here. So I, I would ask all of you to think about it before you vote, because it's very important. This could slip through our hands. And I know there are going to be constituents who are going to say, oh, that's crazy. Who's going to pay for it? How's it going to happen? Blah, 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 blah. They're doubters. They're skeptics. I'm not. Do, does my crystal ball always work properly? No, it doesn't, Mayor. Occasionally, you know, it doesn't work. Everything's a risk. But I believe in Peoria. I believe in Peoria being a great historic settlement of a city. And I've been working very hard, and all of you have been, to help market Peoria and to give it that little extra oomph. I believe this is the extra shot that we need in the arm. So think carefully before you vote tonight. Okay. Further uh, discussion on this item? Councilwoman Akison. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And that was a fabulous appeal and a persuasive argument. And nobody, um, I'm sure everyone is, um, agrees that it could be a trifecta, but probably not in the location that everyone seems to be leaning towards, I don't think. I know that when I was there, I had time to speak to um, Mr. Donahue, and clearly they want to see an offer positioning the boat adjacent to the museum. So if you're concerned about writing an offer that will knock it out of the park, and I think it's got to be in that location, which from my perspective, I cannot support that. But I think that if that is your mission, I think you need, I, I do not believe we will be competitive if we push the ship, I almost said it again, down the river. Um, and then in addition to that, you know, they make the most of their money when they're on tour. You know, they are taking the boat this year to Chattanooga, and they're also taking it to, I think, Decatur, Georgia is the other location. And they rely on those, ex those excursions to um, generate the revenue that they need to keep the boat, the ship, afloat. And um, I wonder, too, about the maintenance uh, expenses that we will experience that we need to take care of on the riverfront. You know, our riverfront, when we had this initial conversation, I went down there and I was very disappointed with the condition of the riverfront. And I think I mentioned it the night that we talked about this. Um, you know, we, it, it, needed, it needs paint, it needs weed pulling, it needs landscaping. There is no money. We do not do a good job of funding that particular um, budget line item. It, it's, it's, it's an afterthought and a second thought. In, and that is because this council has made that kind of decision during budget time. And so we keep thinking of these, these I call them the, the Detroit solutions. These projects that you think of are going to create this attraction, and at the end of the day, what people really care about is how great their neighborhoods are. They want to live in a really great city, and once we create a really great city for people to live in, we'll start attracting visitors. Heck, we'll start attracting people who want to live here. And it's going to require a commitment to maintenance, a commitment to planting trees, a commitment, I don't want to get on my soapbox about this, but it's, it's again, it's that pushing the maintenance decisions down the road, and we've just listened to the police department talk about homes in the city where maintenance has never even been considered, and, and now we have blight, you know, 
and I'm not saying that this boat would get to that condition because obviously the people who care about this boat, and it has a lot of historical significance for Evansville. They built those boats there. They are very proud of that ship, and it was fun. It was a fun tour, and I loved the way Mr. Donahue did it. I mean, I was blown away by the experience, but I just don't think that if you really are concerned about being competitive, I think we've got to agree to fund it without any contingencies, just like banking a real estate offer, and you've got to put it in the right location. So I don't think it's necessarily, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I, for those of you that really want to see that come, come to fruition, I, I would make that recommendation. Okay. Councilman Regenbach. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilman Grayeb, I just want to thank you for your eloquence in, in painting and helping us believe in what we are as a city. My dad was part of that greatest generation, and of his six brothers, four of them were in World War II at the same time. And you, you can say that generation's dwindling, that there's not as many of them, clearly, but I think that's all the more reason why this is so critical, that my daughters and my sons know about grandpa and what he did. I, I still get chills when I listen to the Ronald Reagan address at Normandy back in 1984 and to think that's already 30 years ago just blows me away. So the, the history and the importance of this I think cannot be under, overstated. I, I personally thought the River Station site was, would create a buzz and an energy but as I've was at the public hearing at the Gateway Building and listened to my colleagues. I can see some real synergy with the Veterans Memorial there on the riverfront also and making that our, our tribute to, to the men and women who have fought for our country through the years. So I think it behooves us. Um, Councilwoman Akerson made some good points about the funding and how, how it's going to be received in Evansville. I think it behooves us that we get this additional dollars in place before the, the vote, before July. So that means we have 30 days or however many days to, to start pounding the pavement and making the community aware of this tremendous opportunity that we have to preserve an integral part, part of our history. So, um, and, 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 and Councilman Spain referred to some of the pools of funds that are or set aside for things like this so that we're not taking this out of operating dollars that would be used for infrastructure, something the tourism reserve fund clearly is something. And, and again, um, reaching out to our friends at, at the county, this is going to help with their promotion of the museum as well. So I can see some real synergy there that perhaps we need to explore to the nth degree here in a short time. So I'll be supporting it and encourage my colleagues to as well. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Moore. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the last thing I'll say about the LST, uh, there have been words that have been used that, um, such as hit risk and visitors to our city and investment in people and history and, and, and importance. Um, when you make your vote, and as I said, I support this LST as a concept, um, but not if any city funds are, are expended to bring it here, because the investment that we would make in our folks here in our city would reap us benefits for years to come. Yes, we want to have visitors come to our city, but what, do you, what have I heard from many of you around the Horseshoe and others who have come to our city? They've talked about uh, being afraid to be downtown. They've talked about the rundown nature and look of parts, areas of our city. They've talked about uh, the crime as a result of my, in my opinion, of the unemployment. So that is a better investment, I think, for our future, not just our history, to, to make this town attractive that people will feel like they can come here and be safe, that they can come here and see a, a clean, well-managed city. Um, the purpose, in my opinion, of the creation of the Downtown Development Corporation was to try to assist with these types of things. And if we feel that investing 500000 from city coffers is better served bringing in uh, the LST versus 
investing in training to put more people to work in our city, then we've come, we've come to a place that is unfortunate to be. Um, if we are not making the investment in our folks that their children can see that they, their parents go to a job and are gainfully employed and they don't have to, to sling rock on a corner to bring home bread to the household, then we are creating what we say we despise. We are creating a, a group of individuals who, who are taking their cue from what they're seeing in the city. Our city fathers are more concerned about what's happening outside the city and bringing in visitors than they are about what's happening in the city. And that's not a good look for us. And so I, would I plan to vote no on this issue. If, if, if it is tied to city funding, I will vote no. If it is simply tied to looking for funds outside of the city coffers, I'm all for that. I think it would be a good addition. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Anyone else on this issue? Uh, Councilman Grip. I always agree with my first district council colleague, but is it not possible with additional tourism, we do create more jobs for the people in all the districts. I don't see one, I don't see one pushing out the other. Uh, I think it's a lost opportunity, I really do, if we, if we do not seize this moment. In the second district, we have many historic districts. My constituents believe in preserving and honoring history. Some of them may disagree with my stance on this for the same reasons you outlined, but some of them may also see that this is a continuation, a progression of what they've been trying to do which is sensitize all of Peoria to the fact that history equals dollars for this community. People come and they go up and down the historic districts in our city. They have trolley tours. You're building out the warehouse district. You want more vitality and people downtown going to the sidewalk cafes and everything else. Again, I believe it's a trifecta. I believe it creates jobs. I believe, it, I believe it lifts all boats. I believe we honor our veterans. I believe we teach our school children. I believe we have more confidence in this community. And when people come to visit us, what do we do? We take them to all these places because we're proud of our city. We want to take them to the Caterpillar Visitors Center to see that huge end loader or whatever it is, Councilman Turner. We want them to go to the museum and maybe see Lincoln on the big screen. Now we can show them a slice of history, the LST. We can take them up onto West Main Street and see the new entrepreneurial vitality in the creative class. We can take them along Grandview Drive, the world's most beautiful drive. Nicknamed that by Teddy Roosevelt. We can take them, show them the Puria Lake and talk about the French and Indian connection that goes back, which we've yet to really market. I think it works. I say we make a commitment tonight. We don't come forward with a half-hearted measure that's going to doom this, and we make a commitment and we move forward to ask our county brothers and sisters if they'll assist to ask Caterpillar what ideas they might have. But we make a commitment tonight and not dodge it. We say yes or no. Say no, you say no, but I think you'll regret it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is that a substitute motion or is that just a statement? Well, I'd like to convince everybody without having to do a substitute motion, but I, I I would make a substitute motion that we uh, go forward and expend the dollars necessary to bring this to Peoria with a great deal of confidence and show that we are a credible player. Now, there's no guarantee. If we do that, let's make certain we understand this, there's no guarantee that they will decide that they're going to move that boat out of the Ohio River into the Illinois River. There's many, many things that can happen. 
But for sure it's not going to happen probably with this measure, which I think was a measure designed to keep it alive. As I, you know, I welcome the fact that it was brought forward, Councilman Spain. I know you want to keep this alive, but I just feel it would have had the opposite effect. I, I'm quite sure it would. Uh, so, yeah, I'd make the substitute motion, and I, I hope it passes. Thank you. Seconded by Councilman Turner. Discussion on the substitute motion. What, uh, I don't understand the motion. It's, it's, the, full, it's the full offer, 1.5, or 1.6. $1.6 million, go with that. Dollars all funded by the city? I, I, th I think that what it would be would, would be that, that we would be at risk of paying the full freight. That wouldn't stop us from going out and, and seeking donations, not. but that we would be making the argument or the offer, come to Peoria, we'll figure it out. And we, we, we have a time-sensitive time. This is a time, there's no guarantee, to make a credible offer. That doesn't mean we don't go back and see, you know, I just talked to some of my county board friends. Most of the people on the county board live in the city of Peoria. They have an interest in this, too. Let's see what we can do to get it here, and at the same time, tap these corporate sources uh, and uh, our county brothers. They've, they've been interested in helping build monuments. But even if they don't come through, it's worth it for the city of Peoria. Councilman, does your, does your motion include the same location as Councilman Spain's previous or? I think, I think it works at any of the locations. I don't want to get hung up on that. Um, you know, we know for sure that it's in a darn side better location, as the reporter from the Journal Star can tell you, and as Beth Akison would tell you, uh, in Peoria at any of our sites. I'm not hung up on location at all. I, I don't want to get into that argument because that's just a morass. We can work that out later on. And maybe my question to Mr. Setti would be, uh, for, and even maybe to Councilman Akison, since she's been down there, uh, in your opinion, does, does the offer need to be site-specific uh, on one of those two locations, or do you think that they will be? I, 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 think, it's, I think it's important that we're clear to them what we're offering them. So I would, I would suggest that we, we pick a location. I, I would suggest that while the River Station location is probably, in their eyes, would be the better location, uh, because of some of the reasons that were mentioned, I'm not sure that the, that the we'll call it the Festival Park location, um, is, is off the table for them. I, I, it, it provides them, to be honest, some operational efficiencies that they wouldn't have at the River Station when it comes to access control to the, the ship, and that's one of the concerns they've had with the location at the River Station where there's some separation between ticket sales and the actual the ship entrance. So there, there are some advantages to that location. It is, it is not a block and a half away from the museums, but it's still within three or four blocks of the museums. Uh, it, ha it still has very good visibility from I-74, uh, from 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 other places, so uh, it may not be the perfect location, but it but it very well may. And I'm I'm not suggesting that we'd be offering them just a second class location. I think it would be a a very good location for them, um, uh, and, and so I wouldn't worry that that would be uh, frowned upon by by them necessarily. Okay, so Councilman, I, I think um, if if you want to leave the motion as it is, it's it does not state. A location it says I think it works we, at whatever location whatever it takes to get it passed I mean I think it works at either location I, I agree with the uh, city man assistant city manager uh, so no I don't necessarily think I need to okay. make it specific to a given location okay. let's just see how the council feels if we can get this thing passed okay so a uh, discussion on the substitute motion uh, councilman Turner Councilwoman Akerson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do have a question now. So if we are voting for full funding without any contingencies, where is the money coming from? I think, well, it, it, our plan would obviously not be to fully fund it. Uh, you know, it, it, I mean, our plan would still be to go out and seek those other sources of funding. So, but if, if that were to fail and nobody anywhere gave us one more dollar, then we'd have to look at a couple of different scenarios. We may bond and then pay through the Tourism Reserve Fund, for instance, could then be used as a repayment source uh, to a bond. We could look at central business uh, tax increment financing. 
Um, so we, we could look at some of those other models of, of how we would pay for that. That would be something we would come back to you once. I, I'm not expecting that we would have zero takers on, on funding it, but, but obviously I also have no guarantees that we would get anything. Okay. Further discussion on the substitute motion? You know, before we, before we do this vote, and I know um, a lot of accolades and thanks have been given out, but there, there is a person here that's probably been pushing this in the community for well over 10 years, uh, in addition to a lot of other veterans. But, you know, Bud Ruff uh, is here. Uh, he's, he has definitely been a huge advocate for this going back uh, before the boat went to Evansville 10 years ago. And, and, and maybe to Councilman Graves, uh, part of his rationale and part of his motivating uh, speech was, uh, I, I would have to agree that this more than likely will not just be a five-year commitment if we make it. I mean, I, I just, I don't see the boat taken off, or the ship taken off in, in five years. Uh, so when you look at it over a 10-year stretch, optimistically, uh, it, it really does minimize um, the stretch of time that, that we'll have to, uh, to recover that. So, um, you know, very good uh, discussion, very good um, motivations on all sides, and there was more than two sides on this. Um, I, I think probably the most uh, compelling argument uh, that, I, that I heard was the message that we need to send to Evansville. Uh, and that's, you know, not that we're halfway there. I, I, think, I think that we have to say we want it, and then we have to go out and do the work to fund it. And we're not, and it may be we're not. And, they, and you know what, we may say we want it for, for that cost, and we'll decide what the location is, and they may not. That's, that's a gamble, but it's, it's go forward or not. And I appreciate Councilman uh, Graib's uh, energy, enthusiasm, and, and the positive um, outlook he has for all these things that we're working on here and how this can add to that. So, uh, Mr. Ruff, uh, hats off to you. Uh, if there's no further discussion, we have a substitute motion on the floor, and uh, we'll ask everyone to cast their ballots. So I'm seeing none. Please cast your ballots. Uh, that motion uh, fails with uh, five ayes and six nays. Uh, voting aye, Mayor Artis, Councilman Johnson, Councilman Grab, Councilman Regenbach, Councilman Turner. Voting no, Councilpersons uh, Jensen, Moore, Spain, Weaver, Akison, Montelongo. So that puts us back to the original motion of Councilman Spain's. And that motion uh, was seconded by Councilman Jensen. And we've deliberated that one pretty extensively, too. So if there's no further, uh, Councilman Grib. Chairman, I, I, you know, it's, it's not the, the best possible motion, but I'm going to support it. Thank you. So if there's no further discussion, please cast your, there is further discussion, Councilman Montalongo. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to make sure I, I get my points across here before we vote and let the rest of the council people know where I'd be at on this. Um, Gosh, we've, we've gone kind of back and forth with this here, but um, overall I'm, I'm for the Festival Park location. The funding I think should be 100% fund, uh, privately funded, um, and that's, that's where I'm kind of caught up on this here. I, I really believe, and I am very thankful for all that our veterans have done for us, but I think at the end of the day they'd want us to do the responsible thing, and that's back to our budget. We are um, in a... I think a serious financial um, crisis, and I, I, I think the responsible thing to do is uh, for this thing to be funded um, by the private. Um, and I, I can't say um, as much as I want to find the funding within within the city. Um, you know, I, I take a look back at my district, and I can't say I'd like to give up funding for roads or any projects in in my district that makes the neighborhoods better at this time. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion on the motion on the floor? Councilman Moore? Could you just read, could you, Beth, could you read back what that motion is, please? Thank you. Uh, 
uh, the original motion is to direct staff to proceed with an offer to the LST board to locate the ship in the Festival Park area for an, uh, in an amount not to exceed $500,000 with the city's pledge to assemble the remaining financing. Okay. Councilman Montalongo. Mayor, if we could have a cap on the amount that the city would be in, I might No, there's the city to pick up the remaining amount, right? Maybe I'm not understanding because we're looking at grants. Councilman Spain. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Councilman, the intent of my motion is to put a cap on uh, uh, city's participation at $500,000 the remainder remainder which one or 1.1 million dollars we would need to seek through state tourism grant um, private contributions uh, working with other units of government uh, and so on and if if we're not able to if that other money doesn't materialize then uh, we're not able uh, to do anything more than the 500. anyone else Okay, we have a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, please cast your ballots. That motion passes with seven ayes and four nays. Uh, voting no, council members Moore, Weaver, Akison, and Montalongo. And uh, the message that we hope that, that uh, Evansville receives is that we do want this boat here. And we're gonna work uh, really hard to try to to close that gap, and I'm sure that Evansville is in similar uh, situations as most municipalities in this uh, in this country that are that are hard pressed for for those dollars. And uh, we're we're trying to accomplish this uh, and live within our means as well. Councilman Grib, uh, Mr. Chairman, operationally, if I could ask Chris Setti and the manager, um, I'll, you know, uh, I would think the first call tomorrow would be to our colleagues at the county board. I would th say the second call would be to Caterpillar. And then you guys can figure out the other calls. But those are the two players that we start with. And uh, we have to get this uh, ship down to the Illinois River by what date? When, do, when is this going to all evaporate, this opportunity? by their contract with the city of Evansville. They, they have to make known to the city of Evansville whether they're staying or going by October 1 of this year, but they are uh, obligated to stay there through next summer. So uh, we have time and to you know, obviously design and build something. So we would be looking at this. If, the, if our offer is accepted and we're able to uh, raise the balance of the funds, that would, uh, it would be arriving sometime late next summer, maybe and early fall. You're going to tell them that we have a solid council vote to effectuate. if I've learned nothing from the from the last meeting they're all watching on tel on, on streaming on online and that we're working hard to ensure that we are able to bring it here even though the council only appropriated a half million dollars we're looking at our county board brothers maybe our fortune 25 company and others I will okay. I just want to be sure that's clear. 